In today's video, we're going to be exploring how to play clean octaves on the violin. If you're starting out, this tutorial is for you. There are a couple basic principles as to how you approach an octave and the, the sound quality and the intonation, and we're going to explore all of that today. Let's get right into it. So we are going to do a basic octave on the G string and the third finger on the D, which helps us get that octave. So that gives us a nice resonant sound. And just to give you a better, closer look on that G, that is the kind of resonance we are trying to go for for an octave. Now, one thing that I want to mention is that when we're approaching the octave, there is a tendency amongst my beginners, for instance, who are learning uh, octaves on the violin, that the elbow tends to be too low. And as a result, it is very uh, top note heavy. So even though they're trying to... I'm still hearing a lot of the top string. However, in octaves, you don't necessarily need to put that much more emphasis on the upper string, only because our ears will register the upper string naturally. So here we go. So I'm going to do a G and then a G. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a little bit more bow hair on the G string. And to give you a closer look, this is what it'll look like. I'm not going here. I'm not going too much there. I'm playing a little bit more on top of the string and see what bow angle will work for your arm. You know, I tend to have longer arms, so it may be uh, maybe a little bit different than it is for you, but I would do a little bit more bow hair on the G string. And what I would do naturally is I would put, uh, when I do a down bow, if I'm not touching that D string, I would simply move the arm. Now notice how I say arm not hand or fingers, because what will happen if I move the, just the wrist, then this note does not sound equal, it does not sound even. So when I'm, when I'm doing this exercise, I am slowly putting my arm down just to make contact with the D string to have that beautiful, rich octave sound. And this goes for pretty much every string combination G to D, D to A, and A to E string in Western classical music tuning. So we have the open A and the third finger, for instance. The E can sound quite brittle and uh, quite tinny, depending on what kind of E string you have. So what I would recommend is, again, spend a little bit more bow hair on the lower string, which is our A string in this case. So I would go... I would play that A, I would make sure my third finger is in position for that A octave. And that's how I would approach the octave as a beginner. And once you are like an intermediate or advanced level, you want to start leveling up and start hearing the octave in advance before you play. So a great exercise what I would do is I would put the arm down, I would place the third finger on whatever string I'm trying to get an octave. And if I'm not satisfied with that note, with that chord, with that octave, then I would simply try it again. And the one thing you don't want to do when you're practicing chords like thirds, sixths, fourths, fifths, octaves, etc., etc., you do not want to move the finger once it's on the fingerboard. You want to make it a habit so that way when your finger is on the fingerboard, you don't have to manipulate the finger at all. You just get it right there. And then it'll actually help you in your intonation in all sorts of ways. This will also apply to fingered octaves and as well as octaves when you're playing with the first and fourth fingers. So I put my hand down, I try to set, I really try to listen to the octave beforehand. And I play it to the best of my ability. And if you are not satisfied with that octave, continue doing this exercise. Really, really train your hand, train your mind and train your ear to hear the note in advance. But if you feel like that's too intimidating for you, if you're not there yet, I would start with the lower string and then the upper note. A great book that I use with my advanced students and even 
uh, with my beginner students is uh, by Barbara Barber. They, she has two books out for violin and there's also a viola book. But make sure for this channel you get a violin book. I accidentally had a student come in with a viola book. I'm like, oh, you're switching to viola now? Oh, this is news to me. Well, I'm, I'm glad to help. I just don't have a viola on me. <laughs> make sure you get the violin book. I'm going to leave a link down below. I find that book and those books in general to be very easy to understand. And they offer great exercises for someone who is just about to start the process into playing thirds, sixth, octaves, etc. A bonus tip that I want to offer you is the placement of the finger on the fingerboard. That will also affect your octave depending on how your your fingers are, you know, if they're like skinny like mine, I have to put my finger down in a specific way. So and I tend to lean towards uh like this finger, uh, not right so much on the fingertip and the finger pad, but somewhere like in that middle there, that's the sweet spot for me. And actually I recommend you explore that as well. You know, it's about trial and error. It's about not giving up on the process, being patient, octaves are tough. But if you include octave practice in your practice regimen, then you will establish a nice hand frame. You will also find that by practicing octaves, you are going to improve in other areas of your intonation in terms of your playing style and uh, just it'll be more versatile and agile. There you have it. That is a quick tutorial on octaves. Leave a comment down below if you found value in this video. And how do you practice octaves? Leave a short description so that we can get this conversation going in the community. And if you like this video, my name is Eric, I'm a violinist. Thanks so much for coming across the channel and watching this video. If you haven't done so already, it would really help me out if you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. It also helps me out as a content creator to provide more videos for you. And also be sure to stick around to check out other videos that I have on the channel, and I hope they help you. Again, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.